Good morning from the newsroom. I'm Martin Frawley. U.S. President Joe Biden left Dublin Castle late last night after attending an official dinner held in his honour and hosted by Taoiseach Leo Varadkar. Among the guests in the dinner were former Taoiseach Micheál Martin, Bertie Ahern and Enda Kenny, as well as the leaders of Sinn Féin, North and South, Mary Lou Macdonald and Michelle O'Neill. In an address before the dinner, Mr Biden said there is nothing the US and Ireland can't achieve if it's done together. The President also spoke of his host country and ancestral home. Think about the history of your country, whether it's when we faced famine, hardship, division, sorrow. But together, we've always prevailed. A lot of pain in between, a lot of loss, but always prevailed. Together, we've worked to become more peaceful, more equal, more diverse, more unified, and I think more hopeful. Mr Biden will conclude his Irish visit today with a series of engagements in County Mayo. Air Force One is expected to land at Ireland West Airport around lunchtime. There will be a number of stop-offs in Mayo over the rest of the day, including a visit to the Marian Shrine in Knock, followed by a stop-off at the North Mayo Heritage and Genealogical Centre, where the President will explore the story of his ancestors. Finally, Mr Biden will deliver a speech in Ballina. The visit will officially conclude with a departure ceremony attended by members members of the government at Ireland West Airport. And the weather, rain in the south on Friday morning will clear and there will be a mix of sunshine and showers for the day, highest temperatures of 9 to 12 degrees. And that's it from the news and for now, next news at 3. It was a busy one on RTE Radio 1 and plenty to hear from the day. This is Playback Daily. I'm Carol Moran and here's what you might have missed. The sole policy, the number one policy of the, Na uh, of the Nazi regime, written down in Mein Kampf, um, Hitler's memoir in 1924, is the elimination of the Jews. That is the driving motivation of that political movement. So if you look, you know, at the top 10% uh, of the world's population in terms of income, we produce about 50% of global carbon emissions. Now, have you ever found yourself with a mysterious soggy bottom? I think I'll just leave that question hang there for a second while you all wonder what it is I'm talking about. And we'll start with Morning Ireland and ahead of President Joe Biden's address of the Oireachtas, Ashling Maloney looked back at past speeches of Kennedy, Reagan and Clinton. This evening President Biden will address a, do a joint sitting of Doyle and Shannon, both houses of the Oireachtas together and he's going to be the fourth US president to address them in this way. Our reporter Ashling Maloney has been looking back at previous speeches by US presidents in the Oireachtas. Speaker. My Minister, members of the Parliament, I am deeply honoured to be your guest in the free Parliament of a free island. If this nation had achieved its present political and economic stature a century or so ago, my great-grandfather might never have left New Ross, and I might, if fortunate, be sitting down there with you. The 35th President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, addressed the Oireachtas in June 1963. The Taoiseach was Fianna Fáil's Sean Lamath. The President was U.S.-born Eamon de Valera. Of course, if your own President had never left Brooklyn, he might be standing up here instead of me. President Kennedy was the first foreign leader to address both houses of the Oireachtas. And 60 years later, President Joe Biden will address the same chamber today. I am proud to be the first American President to visit Ireland during his term of office, proud to be addressing this distinguished assembly. In 1963, this was the first time television cameras were allowed to record in the Dáil Chamber, and it was packed full of many political heavyweights, as well as the sitting 144 deputies and 60 senators, only four of whom were women. And so it is that our two nations, divided by distance, have been united by history. No people ever believed more deeply in the cause of Irish freedom and the people of the United States. JFK's speech celebrated the relatively new independent state of the Republic of Ireland. He included, too, his fair share of quotes from poets and writers like Yeats, Boyle O'Reilly and Bernard Shaw. To use the phrase of Yeats, let us not casually reduce that great past to a trouble of fools. For we need not 
feel the bitterness of the past, to discover its meaning for the present and the future. Fast forward into the future, 21 years later, President Ronald Reagan came to town. One Irishman told me he thought I would fit in. Mr. President, he said, you love a good story, you love horses, you love politics, the accent we can work on. While his Oireachtas address was light on poetry, he strongly condemned the violence brought by the Troubles. I repeat today, there is no place for the crude, cowardly violence of terrorism. Not in Britain, not in Ireland, not in Northern Ireland. All sides should have one goal before them, and let us state it simply and directly. To end the violence, to end it completely, and to end it now. The terrorism... I'm not being overly optimistic when I say today that I believe you will work out a peaceful and democratic reconciliation of Ireland's two different traditions and communities. Eleven years after Besides President Reagan, in pursuit of a lasting peace in Northern Ireland, Ireland, President Bill Clinton addressed both houses of the Oireachtas in December 1995. I saw that the people want peace, and they will have it. George Bernard Shaw, with his wonderful Irish love of irony, said, peace is not only better than war, but infinitely more arduous. Ireland has hosted seven so today, U.S. presidents, but only three addressed our parliament. Putin. And President Joe Biden, later today, will make that four. That is the tide of history. We must make sure that the tide runs strong here, for no people deserve the brightest future more than the Irish. God bless you, and thank you. Thank you again for this great honor, and God bless you all. My friends, Ireland's hour has come. You have something to give to the world, and that is a future of peace with freedom. Ashley Maloney remembering the Iraqis' speeches of three presidents past, Kennedy, Reagan, and Clinton, from Morning Ireland. Then later, Donald McGill was talking to Philip Boucher Hayes about the President's visit to his bar and restaurant in Dundalk the night before. Last night, uh, as you probably are well aware at this stage, distant relatives of Joe Biden gathered with him in the Windsor Bar on Dublin Street in Dundalk. I'm joined by the proprietor, Donald McGill. Good morning to you. Good morning, Philip. How are you? I'm very good, but how are you? Was it a bit of a late one last night, by any chance? Uh, a little bit late, but it was funny. I was, uh, I got home at about two o'clock last night, but um, it, the, the, I got the place cleared by about twelve, half twelve. Uh, I was just doing a few bits of tidying up and stuff like that at that stage, you know, and uh, made my way on home. Um, it, yeah, look, it was it was an amazing, amazing which, event. Which I which I gather included the unblocking of a toilet to to, to go yeah, from I meeting the leader of the free world. Um, there was a toilet blocked at home, so that was my last job <laughs> before I got to bed last night. Was clear out the friggin' toilet. But anyway, uh, these but things uh, bring you back down to earth very quickly, as, I you, as you can imagine. Say it did. How much notice did you receive of the possibility of this happening, Donald? Uh, well, that, that was the thing. Uh, it was Monday afternoon. I, I, a fellow called Brian McPartland from the White House staff made contact with me. He was in town and asked could he call in because we were closed on Bank Holiday Monday uh -huh. during the day. So I took him in and at that stage it was still only, look, there's a possibility that the President but, may but be hang, hang on a second. The, had there been a whiff of this before Bank Holiday Monday no, nothing, at all? N nothing, nothing. And I was talking to other guys, in the, you know, like uh, Liam Archibald uh, in the Garda station. They were only told about it on Sunday, you know, so the, 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 everything that had to be put in place that normally takes two to three weeks mm. uh, was being done in the space of a day or two days. And in our case, we were told on Monday that I was at, I told them that it, it was a possibility. Don't say anything to anybody because it may not happen. Uh, at least I'll, I'll confirm on Tuesday, you know. So <clears throat> even by four or five o'clock on Tuesday, I even though there was a lot of stuff happening and there was guys coming in and there was wiring being put in place and Johnny from Aircom was down trying to stick in a, a, a secure a, a broadband line for them and all this stuff was still going on. I still couldn't say for definite that he was coming and this is you know 12 14 hours away from the actual uh, event did, so you, did you have to did you have to then sort of 
keep all of this to yourself while ordering in extra sausage rolls and making sure that oh, you no, weren't going to run dry? You know what, the sausage roll end of things, thankfully, uh, food wasn't, wasn't an issue at all because other than uh, I brought in Max, the Ukrainian chef that day, to cook food for the, for the guys who were working and the security and the, all those people that put the technical stuff in place, we weren't doing food. We weren't going to be feeding anybody that night. It was basically when, when uh, President uh, Biden would arrive and make a speech, it was meat and grease and photographs, it, we weren't feeding anybody, so that, that, I didn't have to worry okay. about that end of things. Here, though, did, did, yeah. did Max, the Ukrainian chef, get to meet the president? You better believe it. That was, it, it, that was the best moment uh, of, the, of the occasion, next to him meeting me mother, because all my staff, were, the, the staff that were working that day, stayed on, and they were all standing behind the counter, hoping to just to maybe get shaken his hand. And as, he, as uh, President Biden made his way past the counter, Max leaned across, it was almost one those security moments where we thought someone was going to get uh, shot because uh. he leaned across and sort of grabbed his hand and but as soon as he said i'm max ukrainian joe stopped in his tracks and made his way around and got in behind the counter so all my staff got to shuffle along with him for the next 10 minutes as he shook hands and continued on his way uh, and uh, all of Ukraine know about this at this stage because Max has been on to his crying mother and the whole lot. It's, it was a wonderful moment for, for, for Max and the other Ukrainian workers I've worked here with me. They're, they're, they're great. And tell, tell me about the connection that he made with your mum. Oh, well, I have to say, this was, uh, it was spectacular because obviously we have a little snug bar at the front and that was the uh, entrance for Joe and would be the exit later on. That was a sort of a secure area and that's where uh, President Biden's uh, the Carney relatives and Finnegan relatives would be awaiting to greet him as well as myself, my son Sebastian and my mother. So he walked in the door and I just thought that I was going to shake his hand and introduce him to me mother but when he saw me mother he kind of just went straight for her as in this is the most important person in the room I'm going to her first and he embraced me mother and they talked like